These are what I call my angels. The guy in the green shirt, that's Jeff Wiggle. He normally wears a purple shirt. He didn't do anything. He sang Hot Potato with the guys out the front. Let's ignore him. He got on with the show, which is good, you know. Entertainers need to make sure that the show must go on. And he did. But standing in front of me there on your left as you look at the picture is Steve Pace. Now, he was the drummer for our, our group that night. He was drumming. He did an hour and 20 minute set with us on the drums, which is hard work. Then next to him is Grace Jones. Now, Grace is a nurse, a cardiac nurse, and she came along to watch the original Wiggles perform with her brother. She wanted to relive her happy childhood. And there she is stepping up on the stage at the end of the night, saving the life of some bloke in yellow. Thankfully, she did what she did. Next to Grace is Kim Antonelli. She was an employee of the Wiggles at the time. She was a new employee. She'd only been there three months and thankfully they hired the right person for the job. Little did she know that her job would include resuscitating a yellow wiggle. But she did an incredible job and next to, to, um, to Kim is Therese Wales. Again, a member of the audience. Therese is a GP. She came along to the show with two of her daughters, again, reliving their fond memories of watching the wiggles. And one of her daughters saw me collapse and said, Mum, Greg doesn't look too well. You better go and check if he's all right. So Therese came up onto the stage and Therese, from what I understand, was the first person to come to my aid. So she somehow made her way up onto the stage past security, tight security at a wiggle show, obviously. Well, thank goodness we didn't have tight security because Therese came over. And initially, Therese thought that I was having some kind of fit or seizure. Because sometimes when people go into cardiac arrest, it can look like they're shaking and, and quivering. And that's what Therese thought. So she rolled me onto my side. Then Kim, uh, the blonde headed woman came along. She identified that I wasn't breathing. That's when they started the CPR. So Kim and Therese started the CPR while Steve is still over on the drum kit playing hot potato. Now, Steve is a very religious man and he swears to God, well, quite appropriately, he swears to God that God spoke to him while he was drumming and said, Steve, get off that drum kit and go and help that man. So Steve finished drumming Hot Potato, he got up and came to my aid and Steve took over and did the rest of the CPR until the defib arrived. And that's where Grace comes in. So Grace comes up onto the stage as a nurse and says, can I help? She gets down, does a little bit of CPR with Steve, but luckily the security guard turns up with the AED and hands it to Grace and Therese, our two medically trained people. So Steve and Kim, lay people, had done first aid training. So they knew a bit about CPR and what to do. However, our two medically trained people, a GP and a cardiac nurse, were handed the AED and they both looked at each other and said, what do we do with this? Because they were used to hospital grade defibrillators, much like what our friends in the ambulance would use. An AED or automated external defibrillator is not the same thing that we see in the back of an ambulance or in the hospital. It's a different device. It is designed specifically for us lay people to use. In fact, it's so simple that a medically trained person can work out how to turn it on and get it working. Thank goodness. Because Grace worked out to turn the power button on, listen to the instructions and follow the instructions. It talks to you, it tells you exactly what to do. And as Josh said, it can't shock you unless you need to be shocked. It becomes the team leader in this situation. It will only deliver a shock to a person who is what we call shockable, a person who's in a type of cardiac arrest who will benefit from the shock delivered from the AED. Now, the other people I need to mention there, the guy doing the wiggly fingers up the top left there with the glasses, that's Brian Parcell. He's a Chief Inspector of New South Wales Ambulance. And as it turns out, he's actually a neighbour of mine. Funny story, well, funny, because I survived, I can say this, it's funny. It's a quirk of life. But my parents were at the show, at the Wiggles show, watching us perform and they knew that something was wrong so they made their way up onto the stage and lo and behold they get behind the curtain and see recess happening on their son later on the ambulance turns up brian comes along and says to my dad now look unfortunately we're gonna to have to send your son a bill for this um what's his address 
And Dad says, oh, look, I don't know. I don't know what, what his address is. And Brian says, don't worry, I think I know. Because Brian lives literally two minutes from where I live. And he walks his dog past my house every day. So he knew where I lived. So I see Brian quite often now, which is quite funny, because prior to that, I'd never seen him in my life. And it's just weird how life, in our lives, things happen and we cross paths with people for certain reasons. And things happen for a certain reason. And up the top right, that's Pramesh Kavor, Associate Professor. That's Josh's dad. And that's how I came to know Josh, through Pramesh. He was the on-call cardiologist at Westmead Hospital the night that I went into cardiac arrest. And Pramesh played his role in my chain of survival. So there we have it the chain of survival from lay people through to professionals, saving people's lives. Everything went right for me because of what they knew and what they did. It was decisions that they made. So my angels, they made the decision to become a nurse or to become a GP. They made the decision to get first aid trained. And those decisions helped to empower them to spring into action when needed.